should you still consider buying the M1 MacBook Air even with the new models that were released over the past two years? The more recent MacBooks have some better features and some upgraded specs, but that only makes them a better value for some people. And part of that decision comes down to where you shop, and I'll get to that in just a moment. Now, if you're shopping for a MacBook Air in general, not just the M1 model, you're doing that because you're looking for an entry-level MacBook, you want a light, slim, and super portable laptop. So getting the absolute peak performance in terms of processing power, GPU performance, or battery life isn't your number one priority. Now that's not to say that those aren't strengths of the M1 MacBook Air because they are. I just think it's important to put everything in context so that you can make a smart buying decision based on your needs. So hypothetically speaking, would it make sense to spend an additional 200 bucks for a 15% improvement in CPU performance? It depends. If you're someone who's likely to push their CPU to 100% and you could get benefit from this additional power, then maybe. But if you're a typical MacBook Air user who usually runs their CPU at 30% or less, then you probably have plenty of headroom in terms of performance, unless your needs drastically change in the future. In terms of form factor, the M1 MacBook Air is great. It has a wedge design, which I really like, not so much because of the aesthetics, but because the lower front edge makes it super comfortable to type on. And as someone who types and codes for hours, the typing experience is super important to me. The newer M2 MacBook Air has a more squared off design, which I probably like a little bit better in terms of how it looks because it's super clean, but it isn't really something that would significantly push me in one direction or another. And by the way, just full disclosure, I bought all these MacBooks with my own money. Now finishing up with the typing experience, the keyboard on the M1 MacBook Air was an upgrade from the previous model, and it's one of the best keyboards that I've ever used on a laptop. So I only have good things to say about it. Now, if you haven't watched my comparison between the M1 and the M2 MacBook Air, the only keyboard upgrade on the M2 model was a full row of function keys. So we have a smaller row of function keys on the M1 MacBook Air and a full height row on the M2. The trackpad on the M1 MacBook Air is also outstanding. So the only thing you're getting with the more recent models is anywhere between a slightly larger version on the M2 MacBook Air to a significantly larger one on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. But in terms of responsiveness, accuracy, feel and function, they're exactly the same. Another factor that may be important to you when determining whether the M1 MacBook Air is still worth getting is going to be the ports. So we're getting two Thunderbolt 3 ports and both of them are on the left side. Now this means that you can only attach accessories or charge this MacBook from one side and also means that if you're charging it, you only have one port available for accessories. In terms of both ports being on the left side, that's the same as the M2 MacBook Air and the M1 and M2 MacBook Pro models. So you're not really getting an upgrade with either of those. The one advantage of the M2 MacBook Air is that it has a MagSafe port on the left side so that you can quickly and safely charge it without having to use one of the Thunderbolt ports. Practically speaking, for how I use this MacBook, it's extremely rare that I need both ports to be free. And if I was looking for more of a Pro model, that would be the 14 inch MacBook Pro because now I get ports on both sides, I get MagSafe, and I also have an HDMI port and an SDXC card slot. Not to mention that I would be able to connect multiple external displays. Nowadays, the M1 MacBook Air is mostly used by our youngest who's going into high school. And you could see all the stickers on the back. Now I'm pretty confident that she's never used one of these ports for anything other than charging, but even if she still needed an external SSD every once in a while, she would still be good to go. And I think that's a good segue to talking about battery life. Now I've had this MacBook since the day was released. And I can tell you with confidence that the battery life is fantastic. I never think about having to charge it. And while the M1 and M2 MacBook Pro models are rated for 20 hours versus 18 hours on this MacBook, it doesn't really translate into a practical difference for me because I never go that long without charging either one of them. Now, if the best battery life is your number one priority, then one of the 13 inch MacBook Pro models would be a better choice. I also get a lot of questions about the display because that was something that was upgraded in the M2 model and also with the various MacBook Pro models. So with the M1 MacBook Air, we're getting a 13 inch retina display, a resolution of 2560 by 1600, 
400 nits peak brightness, it's a P3 display, which is a wider color gamut, and it's a true tone display, so it uses a sensor to detect the color temperature of the ambient light, and it can make adjustments to make sure that white always appears as white rather than yellow or blue. Overall, this is a very nice display. It's not as bright as the M1 and M2 MacBook Pros and the M2 MacBook Air, all of which have a peak brightness of 500 nits. And the M2 MacBook Air display is also a liquid retina display, which can show over 1 billion colors versus 16.7 million on the M1 model. And while that's definitely an upgrade, it's more of a nice to have than a must have for the majority of users. So while the M2 MacBook Air does have a nicer display, this is one of those areas where you need to decide whether the price difference is worth it. And as you'll see in just a minute, sometimes the price difference is small and sometimes it's actually pretty big. To me, again, the real upgrade is with the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro models. Huh? Those displays are absolutely spectacular. They're not just bigger, they're also liquid retina XDR displays, which are powered by mini LEDs. They have a thousand nits peak brightness for SDR content and 1600 nits for HDR content. They also have ProMotion, which is Apple's adaptive refresh rate of up to 120 Hertz, which gives you faster refresh rate for smoother animation and scrolling when you need to. And then it can slow down the refresh rate to help preserve battery life when you're looking at more static content. So if you're really looking to upgrade the display, if that's a priority for you, again, the 14 inch MacBook Pro is a great option. Now, a lot of users are going to use their MacBook for video calls, so we have to talk about the camera. It's a fine laptop camera, but it's definitely not Apple's best, and it's not gonna be anywhere near as good as what most people have on their phone. It's only 720p, Unlike 1080p with improved low light performance on the new MacBook Air and the larger MacBook Pro models. This is an area where you need to decide how much you'll actually use this feature and how important image quality is to you. And regardless of which of the MacBooks you get, good lighting is going to be critical for the best image quality. And here's a quick sample between the M1 and the M2 MacBook Air. Here's a camera and microphone test of the M1 MacBook Air and the M2 MacBook Air. This should give you a pretty good idea of the type of image quality that you're going to get and the type of audio quality that you should expect. Now the speakers on the newer models have also been upgraded and the richness or fullness of the audio improves as you go up in price. But at the same time, speaker quality is a big strength for Apple. So even the M1 MacBook Air sounds really good for a laptop, especially at this price point. Another question I get a lot has to do with processing power because clearly that was one of the major upgrades going from the M1 to the M2. This video is not gonna be a deep dive and I wanna give you more practical advice while we still look at the numbers. So for single core performance, which is what most users of the MacBook Air are going to do most of the time, there is improvement going with the M2 chip if you look at benchmark scores. But I'd be surprised if the majority of users would notice it during everyday use. For multi-core performance, which includes more complex functions that benefit from a multi-threaded workflow, we can see more of a difference between the M1 and the M2 since the M2 has the same number but more powerful high performance cores. And we see even more separation between the M1 and the M1 Pro and the M1 Max because they have more high performance cores. Now having said all that, do I think that this will matter for the vast majority of MacBook Air users? No, because they aren't pushing their MacBooks at that level. The same is true for the sustained performance of the MacBook Pro because of the active cooling system or fan. It's not really gonna come into play unless you push your MacBook to the absolute limit for several minutes. And that's just not something that I see the target audience of the MacBook Air ever doing. And if you do plan on doing that regularly, then you should be looking at one of the MacBook Pro models. Now I wanna talk about configuration and pricing and why it's important to shop around. I think that a lot of users should still consider getting the M1 MacBook Air and then saving some cash. Now, the base M1 MacBook Air comes with 256 gigabytes of internal storage and eight gigabytes of RAM. If you're just using this laptop for browsing the web, to watch content, check social media for email, those types of things, that configuration will work well for you now and for the next few years. But for most users, I would recommend upgrading to 16 gigabytes of RAM 
and then taking a look at the types of files that you plan on keeping locally on your MacBook and also the apps that you plan on using. Remember that none of the silicon MacBooks, M1 or M2, none of them can be upgraded. So you need to get as much storage as you want now and for the foreseeable future. You can always use cloud storage or an external SSD, but there are either practical or convenience limitations to both. So if you want the base model, Apple sells it for $9.99, but I found it on Best Buy for $8.99, which I think is an amazing deal. If you wanna to upgrade to 16 gigabytes of RAM, then pretty much everywhere I look was the same price, including the Apple Store, and that's $11.99. If you wanna upgrade the internal storage instead of the RAM and you wanna get an M1 MacBook Air with 512 gigabytes of internal storage and eight gigabytes of RAM, then the best deal I found was a refurbished one from Apple for $1,059. Now, once you go any higher than that, the prices are pretty much the standard Apple pricing. And then the difference between the M1 and the M2 MacBook Air is 200 bucks. Now you should watch this comparison between the M1 and M2 MacBook Air models. Click on my face to subscribe. Hopefully this video was helpful. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.